We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. We want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It is that time once again where we bring in the man, the myth, and the Stetson-wearing legend, John Hudson, for the unbiased UFO report. And John, it's always a pleasure to have you on Spaced Out Radio, my friend. It's good to see you again. Happy to be here. Thank you much. It's uh, must have been quite a kick to have Danny Sheehan on tonight, huh? Oh, yeah. It was great show. Fantastic show. A little bit different than what we're normally used to with Science Bob, but it was yep. a great, great show indeed with Mark and Danny, and uh, we love having them on this show. And uh, let's get to it. Right to it, my friend. Let's get right to it here. Why not? Ross Coltart, who was a guest on this show a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, He's got an Australian UFO report out. Brand new production. I mean, I love him. Award-winning journalist. This guy is literally jumped feet first into the deep end of the UFO pool, man. You know, it's one of the things that keeps surprising me the most about being within this whole research uh, community is that, you know, at time, uh, you know, uh, every couple months, someone new seems to show up that, honestly brings incredibly important, incredibly interesting perspectives and skill sets to all of us. And it's, it's just fantastic. I mean, we're, we're getting so many new people involved that are bringing so much to it. And Ross is a shining example of that. It's, it's really amazing. But yeah, so this, this is special is something he did for, for, for the Australian market. And, um, you know, a couple people have been able to see it, um, you know, through VPNs and so forth, but it wasn't officially available outside of the Australian market. And uh, I I was listening to a podcast he was on uh, some months ago, and he was talking about the fact that they were trying to get it released uh, to the world or, or at least to the U.S. market. And he encouraged all of us to start, you know, emailing in the the editor of the show to get it to happen. And boom it happened they they live uh they live premiered it i believe two days ago it's now up i'll provide the link after the show and um you know it is you know not to throw shade on 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 any of our local um uh tv folks that have uh you know braved the air to talk about ufos and uaps but this one in my personal opinion uh puts the rest in 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 their places this is a this is this is the exact kind of report I've been wanting to see for a long time. It, it's 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 really it's outstanding. It's just um it's it's really good. Well, I can tell you the way the UFO community and many in there who are absolutely ripping apart J.J. Abrams series on UFOs. I caught uh, parts three and four. I haven't watched part one and two. Where parts three and four were supposed to be the real kick to the teeth of the UFO community. And the experiencers in in uh, number four, I'll tell you, I just kind of shake my head and hope that there's something better out there. What are you hearing you on know, the street I, from people about this? Well, it, it, it's it's um you know the, I think you know initially um everyone was reacting over what to do about the content. Uh, what you know, how to process the photos and the audio. Uh, some of it had been previously debunked by some parties, not by others. Some of it appeared to be new, but very suspect. Um, everyone wanted to trust, but you know, it's very difficult. We're a very discerning community, so that's how it started. Now, ever since episode three has been seen by people, the tone is changing, and now it's it's you know, honestly, the what, what I'm starting to get the sense of from people is that it almost feels like a bait and switch. Like, like somehow this was advertised as a, um, oh my gosh, you know, J.J. Abrams is finally going to help us out and do something significant. And instead, uh, you know, the football got yanked out from under us again. And, um, and I was uh, personally, one of the reasons I was staying a little quiet is I was really hoping that, that this was a setup, that, that episode three did that because he was planning on 
coming back in episode four and and really basically you know doing something significant and really kind of laying down the, the truth but from what and i haven't had a chance to see episode four yet i'm a little behind but uh my understanding is that is not what happened and no i'm i'm, I'm really disappointed i'm I'll really t- disappointed I'll tell you who i'm real disappointed in is i'm disappointed in the casting they have some great heavyweights in there like george knapp leslie keen ralph blumenthal Kevin Day. Then they have James Carrion, who's formerly a MUFOD. Uh, this is a gentleman who, if you look at his, he quit MUFON when Robert Bigelow bought in and the John Carpenter affair happened where Carpenter was being paid a uh, hundred bucks a case to uh, uh, give private information to, to uh, Bigelow. All right. So Carrion did the right thing. He quit, but I mean, his holier than thou attitude on on the show about you know credibility of witnesses, about credibility of what they are experiencing can't be true, credibility about any type of research out there, uh, even going as far as throwing a cheap shot at the U.S. Navy pilots who came in contact with the Tic Tacs. I I don't know where this is coming from. I thought John Greenwald from the Black Vault was great so far Mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I realize a lot of people will disagree with me on that, but I thought he was great. Um, He was was playing a more careful line than I hoped he would, but he was playing the line fairly. I'll give him that. Yeah, but highly disappointing. Then you have a no-name historian in season four or in episode four who comes out and says, there are no UFO historians out there. And, well, let's see. <laughs> if I scratch my head a little bit here, Richard Dolan is one. Uh, I would say Grant Cameron is another one. <laughs> you know, the you know, late or, 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 Friedman. Yeah, or, or hey, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take your historian and I'll double down with the statistician, right? How about we throw Cheryl into it, right? I mean, come oh, on. I mean, it's like, yeah. It, it just seems like they went out of their way to literally rip apart a lot of the hard work that had been done up until this point. And and, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. And so if Ross Coulthart, who is a, an award-winning journalist, he'd be like the Walter Cronkite of Australia. You know, I mean, if, if he is out there chasing down the world's biggest story, I think we have a new journalistic leader in this field. He may not be from the United States or Canada, but Australia is still part of the Commonwealth for us up here. And I think Ross Coulthard, in my opinion, everybody should be paying attention to what he is reporting on. He is a pro. He is going at this with strict investigative journalism. He's not holding back and he's giving the information that he gets. So I'm excited to see this series. Thanks for bringing that up. No, and and the last thing I would add is, um, uh, I finally got my hands on the audio book of his new book that he actually narrates himself, and I could not say enough nice things about it. It's it's a totally fun thing to listen to because he, you know, he even he even throws in accents. It's awesome. It's it's really good. The debrief put on by Tim yes. McMillan. They hooked a big fish in adding Leslie Keen to the debrief team. Yeah, and you know, um. Uh, uh, you know, I, when I started reading the article, I was expecting Leslie's kind of normal, um, very methodical and, uh, you know, uh, color within the lines sort of article. And, you know, it started out um, with this great quote that I won't read the, all of, but it was a quote from, from Mitt Romney saying that, you know, um, if, if, if they were, that would suggest they have technology that is a, in a whole different sphere than anything else we understand. And frankly, China and Russia just aren't there. And either are we, by the way, when asked if the objects could be, you know, adversarial or, or ours. Um, you know, you have, um, you know, several good quotes in there from um, from, you know, U.S. senators and congressmen basically saying point blank, um, you know, these are not ours. They may be extraterrestrial. We don't know. But it are not ours and they're not Russian and they're not Chinese. And we better figure out who gets who owns these, because these this is serious technology way beyond what we can achieve. 
But what was amazing was what she did next. And that is that she then spends the bulk of the rest of the article. Uh, uh, I'll use a very uh, biased term and I'll say she shish kebabs. Um, she shish kebabs, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and, uh, and, and Seth uh, 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 Shostak. Um, it really, in, 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 in beautiful ways, uh, with Leslie's uh, standard, you know, uh, art, uh, you know, attention to detail and uh, and eloquent writing, and you know, she just she 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 lays out several of their arguments, shows how ridiculous they are, and uh, I just want to specifically call out the one she said about about Seth, where um, he tries to pose a a, uh, a a an opposing question and says, "Well, uh, why are they here now? Why didn't they visit the Romans?" You know, as if that's a question that I might, the fact that the scientists would ask that is just horrifies me. I mean, it's like that is like the most like no one can answer that. Like it's the most ridiculous question. And to pose that in this debate just shows that you're trying to make mud, you know. And well, then I, he, mean, I the, guess. The, sorry yeah. for cutting you off. The, the no, please, that, please. The thing that bugs me about this, dude, is the fact that Avi Loeb, who has gained so much traction over the last couple of years, to me literally hit his first flat tire by bringing Seth Stoshak onto the Galileo project. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? This guy has been anti-UFO, anti-anything ufology. And it, it, now you're yeah. in, in the most, in the biggest collegiate effort into UFO study. You're going to bring in the guy who has denied UFOs for decades? It doesn't make sense. So I'm I, glad I really Keen went after him. Yeah, I know. I agree. And I really think what's happened there is I think Avi or someone else is basically giving Seth one last chance. One last chance to save his historical image. Because if, if he doesn't change soon, what's going to happen is, is that we're all going to look at everything that he's been saying in the last year, year and a half, and we're suddenly going to realize why SETI has failed. We're suddenly going to realize who is actually steering that organization and what type of people they had in those steering roles. Because let's face it, this is a guy that was, he had SETI, SETI, like the, the legitimate organization that's supposed to be actually looking for extraterrestrial signals, right? And this is his attitude. It's horrifying. I mean, it's just, um, and and he's not he's not well researched. I mean, he says in this article that you know uh, we have seven hundred satellites orbiting, and and um, and none of them have seen anything that uh, that humans didn't put there, and that is just that is just flat out false. Now he he may be not at fault. He maybe he doesn't have access to that kind of data. But we have we have several quotes from significant U.S. officials saying that there is IR data from satellite of ships coming in, or at least, I, let me correct that, of objects coming in from orbit and and breaking our, and entering our atmosphere. And and we have that from significant people, and those quotes are out there all over the place. And for him to say that, it's just flat out wrong. And it's amazing. I, I, it's amazing I get he does you. it. I get you. I want, we only got about two minutes. I want to hit this next topic because, lo and behold, the man of ufology, the 2017 world champion for ufo research tom delong has broken his silence and he will be breaking his silence about the to the stars academy with jim semivan on a podcast coming up and it's coming up tomorrow and it's tomorrow and you can submit questions and the funny part about it is once again it's a it's a it's a and I hate to say this because I don't know how many subscribers this person has, but it is no one known by ufology who is conducting the interview. And of course, Tom is dodge, dodging everyone in ufology once again. However, I will say this. I don't know if Tom really understands what he got himself into because um, he ever? I, I don't. I don't know much about Brian Keating and, and his into the impossible podcast, but, but Kurt uh, and I'm, his last name is like John uh, Jamunchel. I apologize, Kurt. I'm annihilating your last name. Um, his podcast is incredibly technical. He asks some of the most direct and 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 shield piercing questions of anyone in the podcast universe. And his 
Kolb, his Kolb, um, his Jeremy Corbell uh, interview has 700,000 views. Incredible. I mean, th this this guy pulls in. He did an interview with Noam Chotsky. They got 1.2 million views. And he's only been doing this for a year. Thanks, bud. Th th it's going to be good. Everyone post questions. This is your chance. Ask Tom what you want to know. Well, Tom, what's it like to have the three superstars on your team walk away from you? What happened? He's dodging everything. He is dodging everything, you know. And, and, and it's going to be interesting to see the role Jim Simivan plays tomorrow as well. You know, is, is he there? Is he there as an equal partner or is he there to keep Tom from, you know, stepping on landmines? Well, we'll soon see. We'll soon yes, see. We we'll get your report in just a couple of days' time. John, thank you so much for coming on the SOR Unbiased UFO Report, and we'll see you next time, buddy. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you much.